So for my project, I explored poverty and healthcare. My research topic was, does poverty affect health and healthcare access? So my rationale was that many topics in sociology are in some way connected to socioeconomics, whether involving the income gap, crime, or global stratification. In studying to be a nurse, I've learned that paying for health care is a major barrier for people seeking help. Poverty is many times a cause of poor health due to the lack of basic necessities needed to keep a person safe and healthy. Health care in the United States is a business and that needs to be changed. I would like to make a change in the way that health care is treated in the United States. So, connections to our readings in the textbook. So, according to our textbook, Sociology and Our Times Essentials, um, from Chapter 7 specifically, Consequences of Inequality, I pulled a quote that says, The poor have shorter life expectancies and are at greater risk for chronic illnesses such as type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, as well as infectious diseases like tuberculosis. And another quote, Compared with adults living in households with incomes at least four times the poverty level, adults living below the poverty line are five times more likely to report their health as being fair or poor, and more than eight times more likely to report serious psychological distress. The textbook also talks about how high poverty areas lack doctors and medical facilities, and when they are available, they tend to supply only minimal emergency care and are often plagued with stigmatism and judgment. In 2013 and 2014, as the Inf Affordable Care Act was being implemented, approximately 10.4% of the population in the U.S. was without health insurance for at least a year. Poverty in the United States is an issue and will continue to be an issue until changes are made. Um, studies have shown a connection between poor health and low income. Um, this map here shows um, the poverty rates in the United States as of 2017. The average um, percentage of all of the United States was 13.4%. So, the effects of poverty on health. This is where I began my research. Socioeconomic status is the most powerful predictor of disease, disorder, injury, and mortality that we have. That's a quote from Tom Boyce, the chief of the USCF's Division of De Developmental Medicine. So, this powerful quote explains that poverty is a major determinant of health, out health outcomes. It is noted that people living in poverty live eight years less than those living well above the poverty line. He explains that it is not about the person not caring about their health, but it's about the cost of health care being more expensive than what these people can afford. According to research, negative effects of childhood poverty from prenatal to age five have significantly harmful and long-lasting effects on the brain. Due to the higher exposure of stress, pollution, lack of quality education, lack of healthy eating options, and overall turmoil. And studies have shown that low-income Americans have a higher rate of heart disease, diabetes, strokes, and other chronic illnesses, and have higher rates of obesity, substance abuse, and psychological disorders. Um, in the study from the World Health Organization, talked about the global effects of poverty, so not just in the United States, but everywhere. Um, poorer countries have worse health outcomes than wealthier countries, and it explained that some of the influences of the poor health in these low-income countries were lack of sanitary water and sanitary practices, lack of adequate medical facilities and practices, and the cost of health care. And a quote that I found, in several countries, more than 1% of all households recently spent half or more of their non-food expenditures on health care. And another influencer of poor health is the availability, accessibility, and modes of transportation because many of these poorer countries do not have um, health care facilities within 
a walking distance of their house. So the stigma. The stigma around um, lack of insurance or the use of Medicaid is a major determinant in people seeking medical care. So a study completed by the Columbia University School of Social Work explored how people that have Medicaid or no health insurance fear being mistreated by the healthcare system. The study found that 8% of all respondents found that they had experienced judgment due to their use of Medicaid or lack of insurance. And the study also used a focus group of physicians that admitted their negative stereotypes of those who were uninsured or used public assistance for health insurance. The ACA was implemented to prevent the stigma around public assistance in health insurance, but there's still a clear mistreatment and judgment passed to those who participate in these programs. So the cost of health care in the U.S. A study done by the state of Utah found that the copayment for people who used Medicaid was $2, and it showed that patients saw doctors even less because of this copayment. The cost of $2 for some families is just not a feasible option, as these families need the money to place food on the table or to keep an adequate shelter for their families. The U.S. spends around $3.5 trillion on health care each year, which averages around $11,000 per person. The poverty line for a family of four is nearly $25,000 a year as of 2015. For a family making around 50% of the national poverty income, which would be around $12,500, will spend on average $3,000 of their income on necessities. The price of health care per person on average is a little over $1,000 less than a family living in deep poverty in the United States. So for each person, um, on average, $11,000 per year on health insurance is only... $1,500 less than what a family living in deep poverty makes. ACA and medical care. In 2014, the Affordable Care Act was passed, which allowed states to expand Medicaid coverage to millions of Americans. An article from Georgetown University showed an interesting finding that occurred with the expansion of Medicaid coverage. This study shows that Medicaid reduced poverty levels of its beneficiaries by 17.2%, and it reduced poverty by 1. Point, I mean, 6.1 percent of Hispanics and 4.9 for African Americans. The number of uninsured Americans dropped 14.6 percent in most states, and Medicaid expansion kept 2.6 million people out of poverty in 2010. By reducing out-of-pocket costs for health care in low-income families, Medicaid was able to support families living comfortably and receiving necessary medical care without financial burden. An interesting study that I found when I was doing my research was the Carolina Absidarian Project. From 1972 to 1977, over 100 infants were enrolled in an intensive early education program or received nutritional supplements and were examined several times until the age of 21. The purpose of the study was to see if there were positive health benefits or physical, physical or mental when receiving high quality education or nutrition when compared to a control group. The results of the study showed no difference in IQ or reading and math scores, but did show an improved health and decreased behavioral issues by the age of 21. It is also noted that the long-term effects of this project showed a significant decrease in metabolic syndromes like obesity, high blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and high blood pressure when compared to control groups. So, connections to my profession. Poverty is a problem that plagues our society today, and as a future nurse, I will be working with the community and working with people that may not be able to afford medical assistance they need. For example, I work in an emergency room in a city hospital and there's a blizzard and I get a patient that comes through the door with frostbite of both feet. Medically, this patient needs to be admitted, but he cannot afford the care he needs, including surgeries. 
It is my job as a nurse to treat this patient and advocate for this patient to receive financial help for his medical bills, and when he is discharged, I will have to try and find him a place to live. It is my job to educate clients on staying healthy, and some ideas from the Institute of Research on Poverty include stress management support, nutritional support, and smoking cessation programs. In preventing illnesses and diseases with children, collaboration with teachers, social workers, and parents can be the first step. Goodman and Conway note that healthcare professionals cannot solve the problem of poverty, so we must involve in early action education. And this quote is from one of the articles I read, and I found it really interesting. The analogy I like to use is this. If you are going to if you are hit by a truck, you are going to want to be treated at F at SFGH. It's San Francisco's only level one trauma center, she says. But in the end, your health is going to be more affected by the fact that you were hit by the truck than how the healthcare system managed your care. Poverty is that truck. And these are my references.